Psalm 19 To the leader, a psalm of David The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge There is no speech, nor are there words Their voice is not heard Yet their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world the sky, ever-changing, magnificent, huge. It seems like we could never do anything to have an impact on something so big. And yet we do, in some scary ways. When I go outside on a cold winter's night and smell the sweet smoke of wood fires from people warming their houses, I enjoy the smell. It reminds me of bonfires and eucalypts and fun with friends. But for many of my friends, it means they must dash back inside before it triggers their asthma and makes it hard for them to breathe. See, apart from being ugly and unpleasant, air pollution is a problem because it's a silent killer. Air pollution causes respiratory and cardiovascular disease, strokes, lung cancer, and other astute breathing problems. Health issues like asthma make air pollution a very serious issue. We've all heard the stories about China's struggle to get this issue under control. In China, coal burnt for energy is the major cause of air pollution, and it's estimated to cause about 40% of the smog in the nation's capital. Episodes of thick fog can affect up to 460 million people in the country. China is fighting back by embracing renewable energy and introducing pollution fines. These fines topped $28 million in 2015. This led to a reduction in certain fine particulates by 27% between 2013 and 2016. Air pollution has also been a huge issue in London since the Industrial Revolution. And while huge improvements have been made since then, Long-term exposure to air pollution, particularly in the form of fine particulates and, toxic, and the toxic gas nitrogen dioxide, which is produced by cars, is estimated to still cause 9,500 people's early deaths each year. In May this year, a UK parliamentary committee declared the state of the UK's air a national emergency. The main source of this pollution in London today is transport. Something needs to be done, as a report released in July this year found that asthma deaths in England rose 25% last year. This is 1,320 people who didn't need to die. Overall, according to a 2014 World Health Organization report, air pollution kills around 7 million people per year worldwide. This makes it the biggest single environmental health risk and the cause of one in eight deaths globally. An even more invisible form of air pollution is that of the greenhouse gases that are causing climate change. We may not see them, but these gases are having a huge impact on our climate. And one of the terrifying things about this form of air pollution is that it leads to another silent killer, waves of unusual heat and cold. Heat waves are Australia's deadliest natural hazard. Let that sink in for a minute. With all of our bushfires, floods, droughts, storms, etc., heat waves are the most deadly. And according to a survey in January, 45% of those most at risk, including the elderly, the ill, and the very young, did not respond to heat wave warnings because they didn't know how to, or they thought they didn't need to. Meanwhile, 20% of people in Western Sydney are concerned about the impacts of energy prices on their ability to use air conditioning next time there's a heat wave. Lead scientist at research company Risk Frontiers, Dr. Thomas Lorian, has said that heat waves are not only the biggest killer of our extreme weather events, they actually kill more people than all the other events put together. In fact, between 1844 and 2010, 
extreme heat events killed at least 5,332 people in Australia. To help put this in perspective, the Black Saturday bushfires in 2009 killed 71 people in Victoria, but at least 420 people died in the heat waves before the fires, mostly in New South Wales, i.e. around two and a half times the number of people killed by the fires themselves. And we are in for a lot more heat waves in the future due to climate change. According to the Bureau of Meteorology and CSIRO State of the Climate Report, already 15 of the 16 hottest years in all records have taken place in the last 15 years. And researchers have also found that the duration, frequency and intensity of extreme heat events have increased across most of Australia. This comes on top of a 2014 report by the Climate Council which found that since 1950, the annual number of recorded hot days across Australia has more than doubled. Globally, research from last year has found that nearly a third of the world's population is now exposed to climatic conditions that produce deadly heat waves, as the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere makes it almost inevitable that vast areas of the planet will face rising fatalities from high temperatures. The world is heading for tough times and they are entirely of our own making. Now, you might be wondering why I'm telling you all of these depressing facts. I'm telling you because what we do with our skies is a faith issue. Psalm 19 tells us, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. But the heavens can't declare God's glory when we can't see them for the smog, when there are holes in the ozone layer or when the planet is sweating under an extra blanket of anthropogenic greenhouse gases. The heavens can't bring God glory when they are full of cyclones made more extreme by climate change, when they're full of poisonous gases and particulates, and when the Earth's climate and weather systems are out of whack. Our farmers, for example, know about caring for our land, know about protecting it and keeping it in a good condition for future generations. We need to have the same attitudes to our skies. Like any resource, if we overexploit the atmosphere's ability to absorb our pollution, and we have been, eventually it will, we will destroy it for ourselves, our children, and our children's children. And fixing our climate is not gonna be a simple matter. That's why we need to halt the damage now. Before more, more polar ice caps and glaciers melt, more islands sink under rising sea levels, and more people suffer before there are more droughts, more variable weather patterns and more unpredictable seasons that make it more difficult to live and more difficult to grow food. One quick plug for our Make the Switch campaign. Not every church or house can install solar panels. They might be too expensive, you might have a heritage building, your roof might be at risk of falling in or a myriad of other reasons. But one thing everyone can do is switch to green powder, power. Simply go to the government website, www.greenpower.gov.au, search for your local providers offering green power plans and switch to one of them. Often your current provider will have a plan and you can just move across to that. By doing this, you send the electricity market a signal that there are a growing number of concerned consumers who want more of their energy to come from renewable power. This will encourage them to invest more in solar, wind and hydropower and less in fossil fuel based electricity generation. Not only does this help the planet, it's good for Australia as it helps to create jobs and add stability to our electricity supply. For example, a report by the Climate Council found that aiming for a 50% renewable electricity production by 2030 would create over 28,000 new jobs nearly 50% more jobs than would be created by a business as usual scenario. And New South Wales and Queensland are predicted to have the largest net growth of jobs from this, with around 11,000 jobs being created here in New South Wales. And this is before we start talking about all of the jobs that will be saved in areas like tourism if we don't allow climate change to destroy icons like the Great Barrier Reef, which currently supports 64,000 jobs 
and contribute $6.4 billion to the Australian economy. But again, as Christians, this is only half the argument. We care about our Pacific brothers and sisters who are threatened with losing their homes, their livelihoods and their cultures. We care about the elderly quietly dying in climate change induced heat waves. We care about creation's ability to thrive and bring glory to God. Climate change presents serious issues for us around what it means to be faithful disciples of Jesus and bringers of the good news in a world facing so many environmental problems. So what can you and your church do? Show your young people and your community that you care about them and their futures by working against climate change. Install solar panels if you can, or switch to green power. Save carbon emissions and money by increasing the energy efficiency of your church building. And build relationships around local and low carbon food by starting a community garden. Join a climate march, write to your member of parliament, and divest your money and superannuation from companies that have invest in fossil fuels and carbon intensive industries. Many churches are already taking action. Tacoma Uniting Church has a, a slogan for their solar panels, powered by the sun, S-O-N slash S-U-N. Pitt Street Uniting Church are asking their congregation to donate just $1 per week to help them cover the costs of switching to green power. And St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton managed to reduce their carbon emissions by 22% in the first year of their energy efficiency program. And of course, there are dozens of awesome church community gardens all around Australia. There's probably one in your town or city already. Likewise, many churches have marched in climate marches, participated in the, block, the blockade of Newcastle Port, which is the largest coal exporter in the world, with our Pacific brothers and sisters, signed a community climate petition and met with their local MPs to call for action or divested. And as a larger church, the Uniting Church in Australia Assembly, the Synods of New South Wales ACT, VicTAS and WA have all divested from fossil fuels. So what are you and your church community going to do to protect God's skies? <laughs>